Robert Mendel investigated the inheritance of one trait through the pea plants, his next question was, um, does the inheritance of one factor, for example, flower color, influence the inheritance of another factor like flower height? Um, so he used parent flowers that were homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive for both traits, and he called it a dihybrid cross. Remember that the monohybrid cross followed one trait, so the dihybrid cross follows two traits. Now, when we're going to write stuff about the dihybrid cross, we want to make sure that we have four letters. Remember, if we had one trait, we used two letters. Now we have two traits, so we're going to have four letters, and each trait is going to have a different letter. So here, you can see we have the A's are always first and the B's are always second, so you want to make sure that you're consistent with that. And if our um, diploid organisms, the parents, have four letters in their genotype, we're going to make the gametes, and each gamete will have two letters. So we'll look at that momentarily. So let's see the first cross with his two homozygous, um, one dominant and one recessive. So here we have a homozygous dominant parent plant that is purple, flowers, and tall, and we cross that with a homozygous recessive plant that is, has white flowers and is short. So let's write their genotypes on the board and we'll figure out what gametes they can make. Now when I make the gametes, I want to make sure that I have um, one of each type of trait. I can't make a gamete, for example, that has two Bs. This would be wrong because this plant would be tall, but it wouldn't have any flower color. So we need to make sure that we have one of each type. So this individual could give a big A, right, and a big B, um, or a big A and a big B, right? That's basically the only option for this tall purple plant. Then we look at the short white plant, and again, the only option for the gametes are little a and little b. That's the only combination they can make. So we can put these into a Punnett square. Now, my gametes are still going to have two letters, and then when I fertilize in my boxes, I will have four letters. Notice I'm keeping the A's together and the B's together. And if I have a capital, I write it first. So you need to be consistent with that. Looking at our offspring, 100% they're identical. Okay? What are they going to look like phenotypically? They all have at least one big A and one big B, so they are all going to be tall and purple. And let's go back to the PowerPoint. You can see that that's what Mendel found. The F1, all the plants were heterozygotes, purple, tall flowers. Now, this is where it gets fun. We're going to cross two of the heterozygotes. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have two parents that are heterozygotes, both of them for the traits. And that results in more gamete options, and we're going to make a Punnett square that has more boxes as well. So now my parents are heterozygous for both traits, and again they have four letters because they are diploid, and I'm going to make gametes that have two letters each. So I need to make all possible A and B combinations, and there's going to be four total. You're going to have the most possible combinations when you have um, a heterozygote parent. So I could join a big A and a big B, that would be one, but just as easily this big A could match up with the little B. So that's another, sorry, that's another gamete option. The little A could match up with the big B in a gamete, or the little A has an equal chance of going with the little B. So these are my four gamete options for the first parent. This parent is identical, so it also has four gamete options. Big A, big B, big A, little B, little A, big B, little A, little B. You can write these in any order you want to. This is just sort of my standard. 
So if I have four gametes from each parent, that means that my Punnett square needs to be a four by four. It's going to have um, 16 boxes. So this is going to be a big one. This will be the biggest that you'll have to make with the 16 boxes. And again, I'm going to put the gametes on the top and on the side. You can write them in whatever order you want to, but again, this is sort of the order that I always do. Okay, and then I'm going to fertilize in the boxes, keeping the A's with the B's. you'll feel. I really feel like Punnett Square's practice makes a significant difference. Almost done. Okay, so these are my 16 possible offspring. And let's go through and we'll figure out what their phenotypes are. There are four possible phenotypes that these offspring could have. They could be purple and tall. They could be purple and short. They could be white and tall or white and short. So let's go across each row and we'll sort of take a tally. First one is purple tall, purple tall, purple tall, purple tall. They all have at least one capital or one dominant. So my first row I have four purple talls. Next row, purple tall, purple short, purple tall, purple short. Right With two little b's, two of those are going to be purple short. And I'm going to add two more tallies to my purple tall. Third row, purple tall, purple tall, white tall, white tall. These two have two little A's, so they're going to be white. Um, and then I have purple tall, uh, purple short, white tall, and white short. So one of each in the last row. So we have a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And this is a standard phenotypic ratio when you do when you cross two heterozygotes. And if we look at the PowerPoint, you'll see that this is the same exact thing that we just did on the board. You can see that this one is more color-coded, but we have the same ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. <coughs> 